Thank you, Dean Professor Eric Chang, um, my fellow honorary um, Derek, and also the chapter advisor. Um, so, um, you know, when Eric first asked me to be honored, and I wasn't thinking about honoring, so I said, Eric, I'm busy. I'm giving a talk in uh, Israel. And I said, I don't think I can accept this uh, honor. But when he told me I would be speaking to you, the uh, top, the elite graduates of Hong Kong University, then I said, I'm, I have to come. So I said, I will cancel. Those are the people in Israel. And I want to be here because it is so important. And, you know, I was coming back from Israel. I just flew back today. I literally got off the pl uh, plane, went home, changed, and came here. And um, I was thinking, you know, um, why is Hong Kong so special? Because Israel is pretty special, too, because population about the same, nothing. Around it is all oil, gas. And here in Hong Kong, we have nothing. So what's so special about Hong Kong and what's so special about Israel is the people. And that's why it is people like you who have had the most exciting, most you know, a challenging education. Of course, the selection process is part of it because you are already the elite of Hong Kong. I go everywhere, I tell everyone, the best university in Asia is Hong Kong University. And the best university in the world among the top universities in the world is Hong Kong University. So I'm very proud of you. And I say that the fact that you can get into Hong Kong University already makes you elite. Then on top of everything else, from the elite, we skim out the cream. And so you are the elite of the elite. So I said, what should I tell these people? And what should my story be? What should the theme of what I'm going to say? I say, OK, then my theme will be the story of Hong Kong, 2027. So the story of Hong Kong is the story of you because the com combination of all your story will be the story of Hong Kong. And so why 10 years? So the iPhone, the smartphone, is only 10 years old. Can you imagine your life without an iPhone? So in technology, iPhone, whatever it is, 10 years is a lifetime. And not just that these 10 years will make a big difference, but the 10 years, it, it, it is big, it is long, but you know, in itself, Hong Kong will change a lot, but it's not so transformative that you can't uh, recognize it anymore. But what's important is that what we do in these next 10 years, I think will determine our future for the next 20, 30, 40 years. So that's why these 10 years are very, very important. And your role in all of that is very important. So the story of Hong Kong is your story. So I want you, when you go back today, to write your story. Don't let anyone else write your story. Don't tell me that, oh, I want to be a doctor because my mom tells me I'm a doctor. I have to be a doctor. Don't tell me that, well, you know, bankers make a lot of money, so I want to be a banker. Uh, well, it's so hard to be a, a venture capitalist, so I want to be a venture capitalist. No. Those things, if you think this way, you will not go far. You have to first, to, to make a difference, first, I want you to do three things when you go back. Okay, who am I? What do I really want to do? Where's my passion? And that's important because no one else can write your story. In Hong Kong, we begin to see phenomenon that is not very, very uh, good. Because in the old days, people worked hard and they were not afraid to be suffering, to be you know, all night working, and you know, they're not uh, socializing a lot, which is very good, socializing, but they also test themselves a lot. So for example, my friend Gerald Chan, who gave money to Harvard University to found the, um, to have the School of Public Health named after her, his father. He said to me, you know, I'm so dismayed because my Hong Kong operations, one guy was doing quite well, very smart, came up to me and said, you know, I have to leave, I have to resign. Why? You're doing so well. He says, my mother told me I'm working too hard. So don't ever, ever think like that. Think for yourself and not what your friends are telling you. But it doesn't mean, so first, 
write your story. It's your story. Who am I? What am I? What do I want to do? What am I good at? What really gets me passionate and excited? Now, differentiate between hobby and a lifetime engagement because you can be, and, and also where your strengths and weaknesses are. Because if you're totally hopeless in math and science, there's no point saying, I want to be a doctor or an engineer. But there are many aspects of you know, technology companies where if you're very passionate in development, in see, you see strategies and things, you could set strategic directions for big companies. So know who you are. I think that's very important. The other thing to understand is that this story is ever evolving. So as it evolves, then you want to link with other stories. And to link with other stories, you have to be curious, you have to be af not afraid to be afraid, you want to be unsure because that tension allows you to want to do more things, to question and so on. So, you know, it's not about seeking comfort zone. You didn't come to Hong Kong University to find a safe spot to, to, to explore comfort. You came here to be challenged. You came here to, to, to feel sure and unsure at the same time. And that tension is constantly there. You want to feel uncertain because that uncertainty will drive you to the brink. And then suddenly you have your eureka moment. Eureka moment doesn't happen when you're just having a good time and having a cup of tea. Eureka comes at the most difficult time when you have absolutely you've thought through all the issues. And there's nothing else that comes. And, as a storyteller, so I tell you to write your story. So one of the greatest storytellers, in my opinion, is Steven Spielberg, the one who makes films. So he says that, you know, I love fear and the fear of knowing nothing. So I'm developing a story and then suddenly I'm blank. And the deadline is like 10 days away and I still haven't found the, the conclusion to this thing. And he says, I love it. Because when I have this real fear in me, the best ideas come to me. So if you have to ask for something, ask to be challenged, ask for unsureness, ask for uncertainty, ask for discomfort, because then it will push you to move on. And don't afraid to make mistakes, because the great um, uh, um, jazz pianist Lewis said that there's no such thing as a wrong note. As you know, jazz is revolutionary for its time. So when you do something, you know, when you seek even a career path, when you make an application, when you accept something, when you disagree with someone, when you challenge a professor and you say something wrong, there is nothing wrong with that. The fact that you did it is the important thing. And it's the second most important thing. The most important thing is what you do afterwards. Because that's exactly what jazz is. Because jazz, as you know, was founded by black musicians who did not have good pianos. And so there were keys that were off, and you're just playing along nicely, and suddenly there's a key that's off key. And you can't pretend that, oh, well, they didn't hear it. So you, what they did was they took that wrong key and they improvised something new along the way. So that's what you want to do. So make your mistakes, because from your mistakes, there's nothing to cover up. Because from that wrong step you took, you take a different direction. But if you follow the path that everyone has established for you, is, then you're not going to make new directions. So have your story, know who you are, invite others to join your story, be inquisitive, because you want to hear about neuroscience, you want to hear about what's developing in Africa, in medicine, in, you know, how is China influencing Africa. You want to hear about the natural resource story, you want to hear about astrophysics, about discoveries in science and you know, venture tech and so on. So go out and weave other stories, get other stories and get them to weave into yours so that your story can be bigger and wider and more interesting. Because as your horizons widen and you have more stories that link into your stories, your story becomes more interesting. And so link into others and there is no such thing as a complete story because every story is a draft. So when you've written one story, don't be afraid to change it because as you discover new possibilities, you discover where. You know, I mean, you're starting off, let's say, working very nicely, and then suddenly, you know, your boss comes to you and says, you know what, we don't really need you. 
fine, okay, very sad, of course, that there could be this. But then here's an opportunity to do something very different. Or you're working nicely on a job or a project for your company, and then there's a great entrepreneur who has this great idea and it goes very well with yours. Don't be afraid, just jump, go with it. Don't be afraid to take risks. So I want to leave you with this thought, and this is that as you write your story, you also have to dream, big dreams. And if your dream is not scary, then it's not big enough. So go back, write your story, dream, and not dream nightmares, but dream big dreams. Your dream is so big that you are scared. And that's what you want because, when, because you see, your dream is so big, but life comes along. You get married, there's a war, and you know, in, in, in Israel, they have military service. He shaves this away and shaves that away and you sacrifice this and that and then suddenly your big dream becomes a small dream. So start big so that, you know, if you achieve it, great. And if you don't, you still achieve something very, very good. But if you start here, you achieve something here, maybe. And hopefully you achieve this, but you might end up with that. So don't be afraid. You know, Carrie Lam is a very good friend of mine. And, you know, along the way, it was not easy for her. You know, I mean, you know the, the story of the last few months, but even before that, to be chief secretary, she really didn't want a job. She just wanted to be a good civil servant. And, you know, she said that when I do something, I don't think I want to be chief secretary. I don't think I want to be chief executive. She never thought. Five years ago, she would be chief executive. She never thought 10 years ago, 15 years ago, she'd be chief secretary, and then now chief executive. So what she did, however, was whatever she was asked to do, she would do it to the best of her ability with an attitude of service, with an attitude of, you know, this is the most important project for me. I would get the best skills possible. I would invite the best experts to help me get the job done. And so this is how I also hope you will do it. And don't be afraid. You know, I always like to quote, um, Alan uh, Johnson Sirleaf, who is the first Liberian president and the first uh, woman president and the first woman president of a country in Africa. And you know, her life when she grew up was so simple. She was abused by her husband. She said, most of my married life, I was covering in a corner because my husband would come and beat me up for whatever reason. But then, you know, through this adversity, it made her so strong. Every time I look at something that's down, that's you know, hit me, I, I remember now, these are the things that make me strong. And I welcome those opportunities now because every time an adversity hits me, I fail in something, it actually allows me to jump higher. And so she was exiled when she de decided she wanted to be a woman leader. The establishment didn't want that. You know, woman, what? You would be a leader? So they sent her away. So when they sent her away, what did she do? She went to Harvard. She got an education. She came back. She was stronger than ever before. So don't be afraid. You know, and they threatened to kill her children. So we don't have to live with that, thank God, in Hong Kong. But in those kinds of places, they have to live with that kind of adversity. So your adversity will be different. You know, there will be a lot of distractions along the way. People will si try to sidetrack you. But have your story, revise it, revise it be to be better, revise it upwards, and do the best you can. Don't be afraid of risk, and the successes will come. And you'll be surprised that that big dream of yours will become a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cho.